Hey everybody, Josh down here at Advantage One today, and if I seem a little wore down, we have had a slug of stuff show up down here that we're selling on consignment on behalf of their owners, including this just big landmark over here. But I have recorded, I think, 15 videos today. Now I've got to work on getting them all posted and whatnot. But I'm beat. Enough about that, though. This RV, it, it's got kind of a sad story. Um, I, I don't know its full history, but I know its most recent owner, who's owned it for like the last eight years, never once used it. They, they purchased it and then um, never ended up uh, finding time to use it. They took it to uh, a place in Battle Creek, Michigan that did consignment sales. And the place, I, uh, what I'm told by the owner was that they just basically parked it in the back and never worried about really showing to anybody. And I guess at one point it got vandalized and the rear window had been broken out and nobody knows for how long. So there was a bunch of damage on the rear wall. Now, when we get in there, you see it was actually repaired very nicely. It looks very good in there. And then allegedly something happened again later on. So <laughs> this camper, it feels to me like one of those little Sarah McLaughlin, like uh, this, this pet needs a home. It's like, won't you adopt this poor RV and give it the warm, loving home that it so deserves? Every camper deserves a driveway to call home. And you could hear, in the arms of the angels. <laughs> Anyway, what I want to tell you about this is, unfortunately, because it hadn't been used and hadn't been monitored, there's some areas in the RV that had fallen into an unfortunate state of disrepair. I want to point out a couple of those more significant areas as we go through, but there's some things that, especially if you're handy, you have skills, you could do some work, you could breathe some life back into this thing. It is a big coach that... It's a good bones rig. There's still a lot of good to be had in it. It just, I think it needs a little love to get back there. You know what I mean? We're gonna start right up top. Cause this is, you know, <laughs> if you're gonna have a leak, if it starts from the top, that's where you gotta be concerned. I don't like the look of this rear termination strip. Frankly, I think it's wide open and probably leaking currently. And that's like totally gone, unfortunately. Now, uh, I discovered this after I had already recorded the inside of the video. So later in the video, when I'm in the living room, you're gonna see me open those cabinets and everything's gonna look okay. Sometimes that's why you gotta get up here and look around. I, I apologize for the kind of weird conflicting information you're going to see. I, that's why I wanted to make sure I got this, which supersedes what you're going to hear later in the video done. Now, for the most part, the rest of the roof and stuff seems okay, although I'm, terrified that those might be some of the original factory seals to say that the whole rv needs a peel and seal is an understatement i will also tell you the front termination strip is without a doubt blown wide open and unfortunately uh open to the elements right now now i'm being careful where i step because let me get you down here that is absolutely gone the entire front termination strip like that there's just no decking left. I'm walking on an OSB roof deck right now and up here by the front where that's open and, and has had water affecting it, it's toast. And again, my apologies that I didn't catch that sooner when I was going through the RV. I should have got from the top and worked my way down, which is funny. I actually have a video that I've put out where I say the first thing I'm gonna do when I'm looking at a used RV is get down the roof. But like I said, I've done a bunch of them today and I'm just out of sync right now. At least you have the information so you can make the proper educated decision. If something like that, I get it. If it's a deal breaker, no sweat, as you can see. We've got plenty of other things here for you to take a look at. And at least you know when you call our team, we're not going to smoke screen this stuff. We're going to tell you about it. And we're up here in the bedroom now. Um, the uh, There's another spot in here of significant note, I think. Again, the little things kind of go along with the territory of a used RV. It's the big stuff I want you to know about. And this is, you know, a dark little corner. I didn't I didn't want to, like, hide this stuff from you. Like, you see up here, you can see where that's been compromised. And as we work our way down this wall, you can see where there's been some water affecting all the way down onto this stand right here. Again, it's a bummer that it's happened, but I want you to know we work with integrity here. We're family-owned and operated. I want you to know exactly what you're looking at and what you're getting when you visit. 
And a question I sometimes get on units like this, people say, I can't believe you'd even sell it like that. Why don't you fix that? You need to remember, we're not necessarily like a dealer. This is a consignment store. We don't own this camper. So kind of like if a real estate agent is representing a house, they don't fix the things on the house. They make sure that they're disclosed, though, if you're talking to a reputable real estate agent anyway. By the way, if you're ever in Southern Michigan, let me know. I've got a very good one that I can recommend for you. She does excellent, excellent work. But we are uh, kind of like a real estate agent, except all the houses can move and they're all parked right here while they're for sale, basically. So can we fix stuff? Sure. Can we fix stuff without authorization? Certainly not. Hopefully a little... I don't know, that, that little difference helps you there. Now our entry door is just to the left, and this is this thing has like one of the more home-like looking and feeling floor plans you're gonna run into because it's like a total separate, it's a true rear den. The living room can completely close off from the rest of it, and you have clear definition of rooms from one to the next. Like you have not just, oh, there's the, the kitchen and living room, here's the kitchen, there's the living room, which is neat. There's sliding privacy doors that can close this off back here. And I had said at one point the rear window uh, had been unfortunately vandalized and nobody knows what kind of weather and for how long had gotten into it. Uh, but previous owner, or well, technically the current owner at the time of this filming, had some very nice repair work done. Like you see that, that lower accent wall right there? I think it looks phenomenal but that was not factory original. Originally, all the wall panels were just that one same color. Now, there is a little bit of remnant of that, unfortunately, and I feel, you know, it's like, this is where it's tricky for us because I have a, uh, a responsibility to try to represent this positively for the folks for whom we're selling it, but I also feel that we have a fiduciary responsibility to represent it fairly and accurately for the next potential owners and our viewers here, and uh, it's always... I, I, it's always a delicate balance. I always feel like I, I'm potentially hurting one party for the other. And I just, I hope you appreciate the, the way that we don't mind being a little uncomfortable to get you the real info on these. And it's, it's by today's standards, it's a very different floor plan, but it actually still checks a lot of the boxes people look for in today's market. We've got a direct facing entertainment center, albeit uh, smaller. Man, at the time this was made, even fifth wheels often didn't come with televisions. The fact that that has, like, on the uh, original build sheet, it would have seemed real fancy. Instead of just TV, it would have said flat screen TV. You know, that was a big deal when this was first made. But you notice it's also got, like, uh, there's a little desk slide out right below that little, like, computer tray you could pop if you want to. This is almost like a little desk arrangement down here. That big drawer actually key locks, which is cool. There's even a telephone jack over here. And if it gives you an idea of how long it's been since this RV was last occupied, there's a package there for an iPod Touch Nano. It's been a, it's been a spell. <laughs> now, I wanted to open these up up here because I, you know, whenever I say, hey, there's been some water intrusion in something, usually uh, water works from the top down. I always say that water is lazy. And you can see inside here, there's no staining. There's no like waviness. There's no weird wonky stuff going on. Everything that happened in here happened from the window and down because again, unfortunately it got busted in. A couple of Euro style recliners here, but you know, the thing is an older RV, it's, it's kind of easier to sort of change things around and personalize them, which is sort of what they did here. So this camper came with that little table right there. I have kind of just set as a, a mini coffee table in front of the sofa. We'll get there in a second. They added the little uh, wing out kind of table between those two chairs, but you see there's yet another one. That thing is cool. You can roll it over, flip it, and reverse it, and this thing opens up into its own little, that one, I don't even know, it's a little pretty decently sized table, actually. I think that thing is very, very cool myself. Um, uh, the, uh, the sofa over here, you are just surrounded by windows, good light, good airflow. And then once again, notice you have those, uh, the, the doors that can fully close here to, to totally section off the back, uh, you know, area of this. And that's what's kind of cool is you have a true kitchen dining room as opposed to just sort of a kitchen living combo sort of, I don't know, what do you call them? Like a great room, like you call them sometimes in a house. 
And that is a convection microwave oven, by the way. And have you ever noticed uh, on those like home remodeling shows, every single episode, every single house, they say the same stupid thing like, hmm, yeah, we're going to have to take down this wall so we can open it up between the kitchen and the living room, give it some more space. It's like every single episode, they have the exact same plan, the exact same story. I'm like, well, I, I think at this point, uh, we get the script, you know, you don't need to put it on television. <laughs> now, in, in case you're kind of familiar, a landmark was always intended to be not the everyman's coach. This was sort of designed to, to fill, in a sense, a role that uh, maybe things like the carriage and Newmar fifth wheels left open in the marketplace when they decided to uh, pull out of the towable RV market. That, that idea being more of like, how can I say it? Like a towable motor home, you know, bigger, higher level features, higher class items, but something that you tow in a traditional fifth wheel variety. That just wasn't commonly a thing when these are made. What is interesting though, is how that has become more and more popular. I actually credit Heartland a lot with almost revitalizing a lot of the luxury fifth wheel industry. Although it's, it's hard to, you know, not give Montana credit that too. Something that is a bit of the sign of the times when this one was made though, is it does still have a, uh, what's like an open master suite or technically, I guess you'd say the bedroom and the bathroom are kind of open air to one another, but there is a, uh, a privacy accordion wall on the left to close things off at night in case you have a guest. If it's just one or two of you, it doesn't matter. What What's really shocking is a second air conditioner installed on this. Even giant fifth wheels like this, when this was first made, second air conditioners were just not a common find uh, in the industry when this thing was first put together. Now, in case you're wondering, you see there's like, the classic older style television, then right below that, there's like a little mini monitor. There's actually a camera mounted outside of the RV, pointed backwards toward the door, where you can use it as like, uh, it's, well, it, not use it as, it literally is a security monitor. Now, this over here is very cool, and it's done in a very classic way. It's either just a giant closet, or as you might be seeing right there, you could use this uh, as a closet plus combo washer dryer, or you could put a stackable in here. Now, just for reference, we were just in the door on the left. Next to the washer-dryer closet, you have the water closet, as they uh, were first called across the pond. Fun, interesting little fact. You know, really, not too long ago in human history, we didn't have running water in our houses. And when modernized plumbing first became a thing, when people first started installing a toilet into their houses... One of the first things they would do is they would actually just sacrifice a closet to turn that into the toilet, basically. And hence the name Water Closet. A little history lesson for you, just in case you're curious. Now back outside here, up front, you've got that giant air cushion trail air pin box. Because uh, this thing, well, it weighs 13,600 pounds. It's a big rig. It's on that tri-axle as well. There's more ride suspension shackles between all of those. So it is something, despite its size, uh, you know, will tend to try to ride and handle as well as something this large could. Uh, you can see how there's a cover in here. I don't know that it's seen a lot of use in the last couple years, unfortunately, but look at the ridiculous size of this front basement compartment. Side to side to front, full pass-through. Now, I, I meant to point this out sooner. I apologize. I think you get the general idea, but... I mentioned, I, I showed you where there had been some leak history in the front closet area. Unfortunately, it had wicked down the whole front wall and it had worked its way over here a little bit as well. I'm not excited about any of that, but I'm also never going to intentionally hide things like that. I have a hard line, if I see something, I say something uh, policy. And uh, again, sometimes it's uncomfortable because I, I think the folks for whom we're selling this don't necessarily want me to go into that much detail on those things. But again, I'm, I'm not going to cover them up. I'm not going to lie about them. By the way, ooh, I just ran in. <laughs> I just ran into the bed slide of this motorhome next to me. Sorry. Kind of rung my bell, frankly. Ding. Um, crap. Almost knocked some sense into me. Not quite. No worries. Uh, the awning. It's not just a power awning. That's actually a, a weather pro awning. Again, like a motorhome. It's one of those like automatic wind sensoring jobs. Now I'll say this on the tires. They look okay, because the RV's mostly just sat here. But in terms of age, 
if your plan is to tow it and not leave it parked, you should really kind of think about getting those tires updated. We got this big thing parked over here in the edge of the property. I'm over here walking through the weeds that are knee high, scraping my legs up. That's what I do, guys. I am dedicated to the point of doing stupid things like walking on a roof in the winter sometimes when I really shouldn't, you know. <laughs> the, uh, man, I'll give them credit. Even for the age of this RV, it just overall has a real dynamite look about it. Now, something I do want to point out is fifth wheel auto leveling systems just really hadn't found their way into the marketplace yet. This has power front levelers and power rear stabilizer jacks. So everything's still push button easy. And this is like an OG Heartland product, if you're not familiar with them. This was when they were still an independent company. At one point, they were the fastest growing RV manufacturer out there. And they started with the big, big horns and landmarks. And then they actually went down into trailers later. Obviously now Heartland's quite a large established company, but it's it's funny to think sometimes that wasn't always the case, you know? Now at a glance, you can see where it's had some weathering. There's a little bit of flaking and peeling on the decals. I think that's fairly obvious though. That's not what I'm focused on here. One of the first things I want you to see is unfortunately, the RV has had a, uh, a leak up front, which had worked its way through the bed slide. Now, if you're noticing, this is the trim here that kind of holds the bottom of the slide, uh, like the slide floor together. And yeah, it's, it's unfortunately, it's been damaged. I want you to know this kind of stuff right up front. I don't want you to find out stuff like that way after the fact. Now, I'd like to take this moment to note that I will be signing apologies for my murdering of in the arms of an angel uh, at the beginning of this video later on today. Um, here in the uh, Advantage One parking lot. So that signature series will be coming out soon. <laughs> well, on a more serious note, if there's anything I haven't answered for you, please feel free to leave me some comments or call our team here at Advantage One. I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can see if it's still available and if so, what the price was uh, or is rather. Um, and short of that, let us know anything else you need. And if you just want this delivered and parked somewhere, just like on a seasonal site, let us know. We'll arrange for a driver to bring it out. We just need to know where to take it. So take care. Stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.